I'm Brigantia Blackbird of the Blackbird Grimoire. Welcome to the Daily Forecast for Tuesday, May 21st, 2024. A very good morning to you and, of course, happy Mars Day. We are in a waxing gibbous moon. We are in Gemini season, the Celtic tree month of Hawthorne, beaver season, and the Pluto retrograde. On the astrology front, we have the sun in Gemini, mutable air sign representing communication. The moon is in second quarter Scorpio, fixed water, representing self-confidence. Mercury is in Taurus, fixed earth, representing artistry. Venus is in Taurus, fixed earth, representing artistry. Mars is in Aries, cardinal fire, representing initiative. Jupiter is in Taurus, fixed earth, representing practicality. Saturn is in Pisces, mutable water, representing imagination. Uranus is in Taurus, fixed earth, representing practicality. Neptune is in Pisces, mutable water, representing imagination. Pluto is retrograding Aquarius, a fixed air sign, meaning that we need to examine our intentions. And remember your Pluto retrograde mantra, reflect, heal, evolve. So for our waxing gibbous stage of the moon, we need to be cultivating our intentions. And for the Scorpio moon, remember to do be focused, do your research, and do examine motivations, your own and other people's. Uh, don't be going to large family gatherings if it's avoidable. Don't be psychoanalyzing people or suffer yourself to be psychoanalyzed. Don't engage or be the victim of manipulation. So on the stereo of Mars, we have Aries Mars and we have Lunar Scorpio. So that might give you a little bit of a boost today. Uh, Mars is set to spark your personal motivation to get out there and get things done. And the moon in Scorpio provides the gift of determination, focus, and confidence. So make the most of it and attack your to-do list. Our tarot for today is the Priestess, and this card represents identifying your values, particularly your spiritual values, the values by which you live, uh, finding connection, particularly with the divine, but also with it, with uh, other people, and merging with the infinite. That is understanding, knowing, and taking your place within the greater um, tapestry of existence itself. So this is all about, I think, a uh, um, a little self checkup about am I being honest about what I actually value because you know the difference between what someone says they value and what they practice in their daily life oftentimes there's a pretty big gap with that uh, so doing what you can to narrow that gap and if you honestly don't value something you have been talking about maybe I'll uh, take a take a step back uh, think about why that is uh, do you have a, this really pretty ideal that sounds so great if you're talking about theory or or lab conditions but then when the rubber hits the road in the real world you discover that uh, it's not really how it works at all uh, there may be adjustments that need to be made so the priestess is inviting you to uh, discover whether or not that is the case for you and about finding connection, uh, it is it is the perpetual irony of our age. You know, we have all of this digital connection with one another, but we have very little real personal connection with one another. And I think that is due not only to a lack of communication with people, but just a simple lack of not spending time with others, not really engaging with them in any kind of real way. Whether we you are at work or whether you're at home with the family, with your spouse, uh, whether you're having a conversation with your next door neighbor, uh, we're just not having common experiences and human beings bond a great deal over those common experiences. So if we are lacking in connection, you know, we're going to have to do the uncomfortable work of reintegrating ourselves in with other people. Now, what might be helpful is that a lot of other people have realized this as well. So they are also on that path of reintegration. Uh, so we can all be awkward together. So, I mean, that's something, uh, perhaps not the comfort you were looking for today, but it is the comfort I have available to offer. And this idea of merging with the infinite of, um, Taking a good long look about what our function really is. What talents have we been bestowed? How are we actually using and manifesting them? That gives us an idea about, you know, what it is we are meant to do, the things that we are naturally good about, finding an application and an outlet for that. And uh, and then just pursuing that path and seeing where it takes you. Because uh, many times the gods will definitely test us 
but the strengths they give us, that is a pretty solid indication of the path that we are supposed to be going. You know, uh, for example, my one great gift that I seem to have to bring to the community is that I can simplify uh, ideas that uh, other people make extraordinarily complex. And instead of going the long way around the barn uh, to explain what this is, how it functions and what it might mean for you and how you can use it, uh, I try to hit the bullet points. I try to simplify it. I try to make it very straightforward. That's what I have to offer. So look within yourself and look at the pattern of your life. What is it that you really have to offer to the world and how can you make use of that? That is what the priestess is nagging us to do today. Ah, cooperation from the slideshow at last. Okay, so today's Celtic Triad. Uh, it reads, three losses which will bring gain in the end. Loss of what is more than life needs. Loss of bodily health. And loss of what one prizes the most above all. So I know the last two will seem counts. Uh, when it talks about loss of more than what life needs. And this is talking about how sufficiency oftentimes creates greater happiness than needless excess. Now, if you have earned an abundance, I mean, of course, enjoy that. I mean, you earned it. It's a reward for your hard work. But don't assign greater importance to that than what it really has. If you have enough to maintain yourself and your family and your household and you're living a meaningful life, you know, that is sufficient. That is, you know, I, I don't like to use this phrase because so many people uh, have a pretty... Um, they don't have a good spin on it, but it is what constitutes good enough. It is what constitutes contentment. Uh, there are certain things that, you know, money cannot buy you greater enjoyment of the blessings that you have uh, oftentimes. And that's really what this is referring to in the verse here. Now, let's talk about uh, the loss of bodily health. Now, we know that wisdom is often created during times of adversity, and that also includes uh, during health challenges. Uh, when we, uh, we find ourselves in an ill condition of health, particularly as we get older or if we just have a chronic condition that uh, you have to manage, you just have to live with it because, you know, medical science isn't there yet. And there's a, a limit to what you can do so oftentimes with healing because, you know, our bodies, they are finite. They are mortal. Uh, you no know, matter how good of care we take of ourselves, uh, there is going to come a point where it does break down. And when, you know, our physical life in this incarnation will come to an end. Uh, so not praising, placing, uh, you know, again, an undue importance upon having outstanding bodily health. Uh, a lot of the people who who are just extending examples of exercise or outstanding examples in, uh, in very disciplined diets, you know, and then you go a few years down the road and like, oh, they were taking these pills or, oh, they were doing uh, some interesting tricks with camera angles and lighting and editing and things just weren't exactly as they were seeing. It, uh, it does show you that uh, a lot of times the people who represent the ideal and says that is just the end all be all. Well, you know, they're not uh, really living up that to that themselves either. And also when you are having to learn patience for dealing with, uh, you know, some kind of physical deficiency uh, that is teaching you that, you know, life can can still have value. Life can still have meaning. Life can still have enjoyment, even if things aren't all smooth sailing all of the time. And I think that is a lesson that is so needed and gets so lost and that people have considerable resistance to because people are striving for the ideal. They think that the ideal will make them happy. Uh, that isn't necessarily the case. Uh, if you actually attain an ideal of some sort, that is an achievement. But achievement is not always happiness in and of itself. And that's that is the lesson here, I think. And then uh, the loss of what you prize the most above all, uh, losing what you wanted most, uh, that teaches you the meaning and value of your life is not dependent upon that one thing, whether it is, you know, I've got to move to this area of the world because that's what I want the most of all, or I've got to marry this person only, you know, it, the relationship doesn't work out or they end up marrying someone else, or you did marry them. And then that relationship didn't work out and you ended up divorced. Uh, there's a lot of things that we, that we want. A lot of things that we think will be really good for us that ultimately are not going to determine uh, the satisfaction that we have in life, whether or not we have value as an individual or whether or not we are spending our lives in a meaningful and worthwhile way. It's not dependent upon that one thing. So when we lose these things, we reveal that even though we might have liked them, even though we might have enjoyed them, they are not the point of it all. This is not how satisfaction and meaning is really attained. And that drives us back inwards and and going back again to our core qualities of, are we doing in life that which we are meant to do? Are we using our strengths for good purpose? Are we doing, are we living 
not only for our own lifetimes, but also thinking about what sort of world we leave behind. That is internal work. And doing that internal work is going to put you in better alignment uh, for taking the proper actions in order to have a lot more satisfaction, but also to understand that if you lose something, it's not the end of everything. And I think that's something that we could probably do well to meditate on quite a bit. I think this um, endless obsession over loss or things not working out the way we intended them to, or people not acting the way we might wish them to, I think obsessing over that and never moving on from those thoughts, that is just tearing people down in a way that just cannot be quantified. So uh, I hope that I hope you find something in this uh, in this verse today. Now, uh, our magical intention for today is fertility. And for that, the color is red, the plant is the poppy, the animal is the rabbit, and the crystal is the garnet. Now, when we're thinking about uh, fertility and creation, uh, creation really is the business of life and it is the gift of life. Whether we're talking about people making a baby or you're writing a novel or you're building a skyscraper or whatever it is that you are pursuing, these fertile creative energies are relevant in all of our lives. And that's really what we should be focusing upon. It's, it's easy to break things. It's easy to destroy things. It's easy to make a mess. But can you build? Can you create? Can you have something that is actually say, look at that. That's good. And it could be something very simple. Maybe, maybe you planted a garden for the first time of your life and your flowers are blooming and everything just looks really nice. The structure of the garden, the color combinations, the scent, it just, it all came together. That is also a manifestation of fertility, not only of the earth's energies, but also the fertility of your creativity, the thought and the work you put behind creating that effect. And that has a great deal of meaning and purpose in it. Now, for today's pagan practice, uh, consider honoring a deity that has inspired you during difficult times. And especially if you are undergoing a period of extreme difficulty right now, leaning on the relationship with that deity, looking to the lessons that they can teach you, uh, thinking about what qualities they possess that you could emulate in order to better cope with your circumstances, uh, that could be very helpful to you, as well as facing a fear. It seems like a lot of people these days are afraid of everything, including their own shadow. Uh, so facing down these fears, understanding that these fears are not necessarily the big uh, monoliths that they might feel at the moment and breaking them down and saying, I have strength too. I have the metal uh, to not allow this fear to run my life or to determine what I will or will not do, uh, that can really build up your confidence by doing that. And of course, building up your confidence, uh, that also gives you the strength to actually be who you are in life, including living your religious path in life. Uh, I am tired of people hiding away their paganism as though it's something to be ashamed of, as though you know we have to apologize for our values and the wisdom that we've been gathering in this modern age. Uh, that, you know, that's bringing it back from the past. I'm tired of people doing that. And I think a lot of it is based on fear of all, all these dreadful things could happen to me if people know I'm a pagan. Well, maybe they could or maybe they couldn't. Uh, maybe we are in a currently in a stage of life where it is not going to be life altering or life ending uh, to be known as a pagan. So facing our fears and saying, you know what? This, these are my values, and not only do I not think that there's nothing wrong with them, I think a lot of these virtues that the pagans valued in ancient times not only have relevance to today, but could go a long way towards solving ongoing problems that we face as individuals, as families, as a society. We have something worthwhile to offer to the world. I would like to see pagans having confidence in themselves and taking pride and taking their place in this larger tapestry. And it all begins with facing fears. Uh, another thing you might do today is examine whether your uh, conduct matches your stated ideals. Uh, that takes us uh, back again to earlier segments of this particular forecast. Uh, but just, you know, turn yourself on the mirror. And there's, I see a lot of whining and complaining on Twitter, especially the past couple of days. And this uh, isn't specifically towards pagan Twitter. I saw it, you know, every so often the uh, Christian algorithm of Twitter, you know, shows up on my feed for goodness knows what reason. But I see this among atheists. I see this in, in politics. I see this in everything of people who are going around complaining about what other people are doing. And I'm thinking, have you looked in the mirror lately? Have you seen how perhaps you are not helping the situation? Uh, I see this uh, a lot. 
everywhere. So we all, could all, you know, spend a little time in the mirror. And then again, it isn't about, you know, feeding our vanity or about beating ourselves up. It's just about learning to see what is and making adjustments as appropriate. Another thing to do would be to go outside to relieve some stress. There's just something about uh, going outside, even if it's just in a, a city park. If you're outside amongst the plants, uh, the animals, some natural energies, and could go a long way towards uh, putting the stress back in its place. And again, if you are able to do some meditation, particularly if you're sitting on the ground, or if you're able to walk around barefoot, allow the earth to absorb some of this uh, frantic energy out of your system. Get it out. And then because it's Tuesday, it's always a good day to uh, read a passage from The Art of War by Sun Tzu. It's very helpful uh, when dealing with how to navigate uh, various conflicts, whether it is actual kinetic warfare like he was primarily discussing, or if it's just difficulties in our interpersonal relationships or even difficulties inside here. Learning about the mentality of a warrior and learning about tactics uh, that can be so useful to us. Now, finally, for our journal, uh, what advice would you give to a newlywed pagan couple? Now, if uh, you're not married or you've never been married, uh, you might feel a bit ill at ease. Uh, but uh, in which case, uh, maybe you could transform this prompt into what do you think would be helpful for people who have experienced marriage life, who have been successfully married? What insights do you imagine they might have for you that would be helpful to you? Uh, because, you know, if you should uh, form a long term partnership and actually tie the knot, uh, that you might be a bit more receptive when people begin offering advice ahead of that particular date, uh, because they will. And uh, if you're open to it, you might be able to glean some uh, some kernels of wisdom. So that's what I've got for you today, gang. Uh, come back tomorrow for the next edition of the daily forecast in the meantime uh let me know your thoughts on this one uh, in the comments below or again you can always email me at brigantia blackbird at protonmail.com and you can just share some of your thoughts with me there if you would like to have a little bit more of a one-on-one -on -one in depth conversation there if you would like to that is an avenue that i do keep open uh but that will do it for today gang and i will see you guys next time bye <laughs>